So this is a house uh, that I've been working on recently and this house, just to preface it, is for an owner builder. So I find that I always want to put a lot of detail and effort into my work. I want to make my architecture not just hopefully look pretty, but also work out the construction, work out the detailed understanding of it. That's important to me. But even more so when I'm doing that for a builder, we might call that tender documentation, it's very, very important that I do that when I'm working for an owner builder because often the owner builder doesn't have that construction understanding that a professional builder will and so they need to know every single little detail of how it's put together. And part of what I do therefore is work out the pricing to be able to give them a detailed understanding of that. Now Archicad is BIM, Building Information Modeling, and what that means is that we can work out things like quantities. So within our schedules, elements, now builders have been taking takeoffs off drawings for years and years and years, so they'll get a drawing printed or obviously photocopied, measure it with a ruler, maybe mark it up with a highlighter and work out those quantities manually. But it's so much better if we can get a model, a 3D model, to be able to work that out for us. So as long as we have elements that are broken up into the idea of what type they are, we're just talking about walls at the moment, so quantity walls, what type of wall they are. So in this case, this is based on a composite, a composite name. So that composite name, Dinsel rendered in this case means that it's a 150 millimeters thick Dinsel panel. Uh, the, the panel itself is only a few millimeters thick and then that's core filled with concrete so that can give us a volume, a meters cubed of concrete quite easily and it's rendered so that will give us a surface area of the render maybe on one side or both sides. So we have a thickness and we have an area calculation and we can merge our uniform items which, which means instead of seeing every single one of these particular walls we ha now have a total area calculation. So this isn't a, a number, a currency number, but this is a quantity. And from that quantity, then we can swap over. So let's open up a Excel spreadsheet and look at how that can be put into place. So here we can break up a material, and in this case, the way that I've done this isn't to break up each individual material, but to break up composites or the idea of a system. So here we have a wall system. So this is a, let's look at this one, because this is the one that we're just talking about. So we have a wall external dinsel 155 PCF, that just means permanent concrete form. Uh, what are we basing that off? The idea of in situ concrete. Now, depending on where you get this price, you'll have different answers. So the advantage of something like a Dinsel system or um, AFS logic wall is that the formwork is permanent. And that means that it's much faster to create, much faster to erect, but you lose the cost of the formwork. So there's a bit extra cost in the material and there's a lot less cost in the labour. And therefore, there's also a lot less time in the setup. And that's where, ideally, the savings come. So when we add up the square meter, so this is the face square meter, so a vertical square meter of the wall at 155 thick. When we add up the square meter of acrylic render on, say, the inside and the acrylic render on the outside, we have quantities. And of course, they're the same, 75 square meters in this case. We have material cost, so that's saying $178 per square meter for the wall, $2.60 per square meter for the render. So then we can use formula. So of course, this is out of Archicad, so I'm sort of cheating maybe a little bit, but I find it easier to get Archicad to do what it's really good at and then use something like Excel to do what it's made for. So when we do this, we, we see what are we talking about? We're talking about a formula. So this formula multiplies the quantity times the material. And then just to make this very easy, we add up these materials. So this number here is a sum quantity of these. So that way we can have two columns where we have a, for the whole project, a materials total, a materials subtotal, 
just to ensure that they're the same number. If they're not the same number, my formulas have gone wrong somewhere. Back up the top, we have labor. So this is labor, again, per square meter. So $50 per meter square. And then that's worked up as a labor total and a labor subtotal. And of course, then we have combined, which is worked out as a sum of the materials and the labor quantity. And then of course, that's worked out as a a subtotal of the combined sum, just so when we get again back down to the bottom of the list, we should have three numbers, materials, labor, and total. And if they don't all, if the red and the black don't match, then I've made a mistake somewhere. So this is just error checking. What's the architecture word for that? Quality assurance. And that's really a major part of BIM, building information modeling, because we need to work in such a ways that we can quantify we can determine through projection, that's the two-dimensional way, through error checking, determining when things overlap or being able to see them in three dimensions, when things aren't working as they should. So how do we create these? What's the, what's the mathematics behind it? When we're looking at these numbers, type, thickness, area, area, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Why do we have two different areas? Because we've got here roofs and slabs and unfortunately roofs and slabs calculate their volumes or surface areas in different ways so when we go into the settings scheme settings what are we looking at we're looking on criteria so that means from our entire BIM model we're only choosing slabs and roofs and that says slab or roof meaning that we could either be doing a slab or roof we don't have anything that's a slab and a roof so if I did that Nothing would be there. Everything would go away. So we need to make sure we get some of these formulas right. What's next? Then we have the information to be displayed. We're providing information or a listing based on the material schedule composite profile fill. We're providing information on the thickness, the top surface area, and the conditional top surface area. So we see that these are basically the same. That's just for slabs, and that one's for wall. Uh, sorry, for roofs. And where there's this little funny figure here, which means they're both being tallied. They're both being quantified. They're being added up. I don't need to add up the thickness. That's a bit silly. And I don't need to add up the building materials. I only need to add up the areas. And that gives me this calculation. And again, in the same way, I can break that down. So that's showing every single instance or showing a total quantity of any particular type. So even though it's called slab and roof in Archicad, that just means a slab is a rectangle that's flat or a surface that's flat. And roof is a polygonal surface that is on a slope. So in that way, a ceiling can be a slab or a ceiling could be a roof if it was raked, if it was pitched. A driveway could be a slab or a driveway could be a roof if it was on an angle. So we use the different objects, the different elements in Archicad. We give them again a name by either being a composite or a building material and then we can use that to work out quantities and that even works out for the idea of cut and fill. And it took me a little bit to figure out how to get this to work, but I was very happy when I did. So what that meant is I could work out what is the earth, the terrain as it's existing. I'm creating a new terrain mesh called new, and then I'm creating other things like slabs and calling them terrain fill. So that means I know that my existing site is this large. Now this number doesn't really mean anything because we're just talking about a slice of earth. And my new means I'm cutting into that up to 200 square meters and then I'm adding back in 188 square meters. So I know that I'm only taking away a very small amount of quantity. Now let's look at that in 3D so it makes more sense. So if we're looking at the whole site model, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. But if we were then to turn off all of the layers... And we'll just turn on one terrain existing. That's what the site looks like at the moment. 
that's what it looks like before any excavation is done. Now if we change this and turn on Terrain New, that's what the site will look like once it is excavated and that's allowing for bulk excavation. There's a bit of a semi-basement area here, a utility room at the back of the house and there's a fairly significant retaining wall at the back of the site to get rid of the, the fill that's been placed there during the, um, the site works that were done for the development. And then we're just missing something, so then we need to add back in the terrain fill. And effectively, that means when we're doing a infill slab, we actually take some of that dirt and instead of having a sloping site that means it's not very usable, we create lots of flat areas, flat areas what we'd call something like a terrace. And we're filling underneath the concrete slab, so that means we don't need to suspend the concrete slab, but we're placing it on controlled fill. And we're using the dinsel walls around that as retaining walls to ensure that it doesn't basically spread. But at the end of the day, it's a highly detailed model, which also makes the drawings look good. So when we go to a saved view, we can see that this isn't two-dimensional, this is actually based on a 3D mesh and a 2D slab. The footings are even being cut into the slab so we can even quantify how much dirt is being removed for the footing and we can determine how much concrete and therefore steel is in the footing. So this type of thing makes quantities very easy and building a template that allows us to be able to um, <laughs> spelling uh, doing quantities that allows us to be able to make highly detailed models and then be able to give us information such as pricing is very very useful. It takes a bit of extra time particularly when you first do it but once you've got that file set up, once you've created these schedules it becomes very very easy to change and very very easy to use for further projects.